Hello and welcome to Paraben Consumer Software's tutorial on how to use the iRecovery stick. In this tutorial we're going to cover how to recover deleted data from and investigate iPhones and iPads and we're going to be covering iOS version 11.4.1 and 12 because there have been some major changes uh, starting with 11.4.1. So if you are running one of these OS's on your device um, this video is for you. If you've got an older OS on your device, we have um, other videos that cover how do you uh, recover data from those devices, and we'll go over what has changed. So let's first talk about some of the features. The yeah, iRecovery Stick can recover deleted text messages. It can recover from the device itself or from iTunes backup files. It recovers deleted call history, contacts, calendar entries, Safari bookmarks, and recently deleted photos. And it downloads all the user data. And this is very important if you're doing an investigation on an iOS device because a lot of the data that you are going to look for is just going to be in regular user data. It isn't necessarily going to be coming from deleted data. And it is based off of digital forensic software that is used throughout the world by law enforcement and forensic investigators. So let's also talk about some of the limitations. In iOS 11.4.1 and iOS 12, deleted SMS recovery is limited to only a 24 hour period. That means if you delete messages from a device, you have 24 hours to recover those messages. The good thing is that 100% of the messages are recoverable within this 24 hour period. Whereas before you could recover uh, messages Sometimes you could recover them, sometimes you couldn't. Sometimes data was overwritten quickly. Um, if you've deleted a whole bunch of conversations, sometimes um, only, only maybe half of those conversations could, recover, could be recoverable um, within a few minutes of those deleted uh, the conversations. So now you can recover 100% of those messages, um, but it's only within a 24 hour period. You must remove the passcode, thumbprint, and or facial recognition on the device. You can't just unlock the device screen and try and recover data. Um, you have to actually remove the passcode or the thumbprint and, and facial recognition from the settings of the device before you start a recovery. You must have the iTunes backup password if there is one. Now note that this is a different password um, as the I Apple ID password. The Apple ID password is for your Apple account iTunes backup password is when you create an iTunes backup, if you add a password, um, it's going to encrypt that backup file as well as the phone itself. Now the password could be the same as the Apple ID password, but it's not necessarily the same. So if you have a password set on an iTunes backup from a device, you have to remove it by doing a new backup without a password on it. When you do this new backup, if it has an old password there, it's going to require you to enter that old password before you can do a new password. Um, so you have to have that password. It does only support Windows Vista 7, 8, or 10. Uh, we do not support Mac. So you have to have access to uh, a computer with one of these operating systems to perform a recovery. So let's jump right into this. To start a uh, recovery, plug in the iRecovery stick into your computer, and it's going to pop up with a drive letter. The drive letter might be different, it doesn't really matter, and you might not see all these files or folders. All you need to do is double click on the iRecovery Stick app to open it up. On the main screen here, when we're doing a recovery from the device itself, you're going to click on the Start Recovery button. Um, before we do that, you're going to want to attach the iPhone or the iPad, whatever device you're going to be um, recovering from, and you're going to need to trust that device, that computer on the device's screen. Now you can do this after you've clicked on the, uh, the Start Recovery button, um, but once you click on that Start Recovery button, if you have done the steps to connect the phone to the computer properly, you're going to see an image of a device here. Now it might not look like the device that you've got plugged in, but that doesn't really matter. All you need is something here. If you don't see something here, then you don't have the device um, connected to the computer properly. 
and we'll go over some tr troubleshooting as to what may be causing that later on. If you see the device, go ahead and click on it. And in the next step, you're going to choose whether you're going to require only text and multimedia data, or if you're going to require all data, including third-party app data. Now, the third-party app option is going to take longer to uh, recover. So if you are restricted on time, you're going to only want to recover the text and multimedia data. Once you've done that and you click Next, it's going to start the recovery process, and you're going to see these um, categories pop up and you're going to see progress happening here. Now recovery may take several hours depending on how much data is on that device. So keep that in mind as you're doing a recovery. Once the recovery is finished, um, you're going to be able to open up that data and, and see the data in the device. So let's go through some of those troubleshooting things that I talked about a little earlier. First, a lot of people don't realize that their uh, device is pa password protected and they don't recover or remove the passcode. So make sure you remove the passcode completely in settings and make sure that the iTunes backup file is not password protected. Another options, the other things that you're going to run into are the connection is broken. You're going to get this message if um, you haven't removed the screen lot, if there is an iTunes password. Um, or if the connection is, is broken through a physical connection through the um, USB port or the cable. Sometimes you've got a bad cable and it can't maintain a connection. Sometimes USB ports get messed up and they can't maintain a connection either. So you're going to want to change the USB ports or try a different cable. Um, if you know that you've removed the passcode and that your device does not have a pass, pass I'm sorry, an iTunes password. So if all these things fail, the last resort is to recover from iTunes backups instead. This is going to recover the same data as you're going to get from the phone itself, except for the third party app data. So you're not going to miss anything if you do um, a text and multimedia backup um, recovery from the device itself versus an iTunes ba uh, pack backup recovery. So, once we've recovered the data here, let's show you a little bit about what you're going to see. So, once a recovery is completed, you can click on contacts to view all the contacts, messages to view SMS messages. Now, this isn't going to show the deleted data here. Um, so, you can look at all the different areas that you can click on to see the data that's been downloaded from the phone. Deleted data recovery is here where the big red X is. So a lot of times uh, people think that the big red X is that uh, there was something wrong. This is to signify that this is where the recovered data is located. So this is what it's going to look like for recovered data. You're going to have recovered SMS history, recovered call history, and all these tags are going to be for different recovered types of data. So let's go through recovering from iTunes backup. It's a very similar process. But rather than clicking on the phone up here for the start recovery, you're going to click on the start import from iTunes backup icon there. And you're going to have a screen pop up that allows you to navigate to the iTunes backup uh, files here. So you can see here that the location is under users, info, as the info is the user account. So on this computer, the account is called info. It may be whatever um, you've assigned for the user account. Then under application data, and Apple computer, then mobile sync, and then backup. Under this backup uh, folder, you might have multiple folders depending on how many devices are backed up to this computer. Um, so you may need to perform a recovery on all these. I would recommend doing a recovery on all the backup um, device or folders because sometimes if you've upgraded from older phones, you're gonna have old messages and old data from the previous phone and the newer phones are going to have a completely new backup file. So you can have a treasure trove of data from old backups. Once you open up the backup file, you're going to scroll over until you see the manifest.plist file. Select that and hit open. And that's it. It's going to go through the recovery process. And you're going to see the um, data recovered 
similarly to the uh, screen that I showed you for recovering directly from the iPhone itself. In fact, it's going to look exactly the same um, without the third-party apps. So that concludes our tutorial on how to recover from iTunes and iOS devices using the iRecovery Stick for uh, iOS 11.4.1 and iOS 12. Thanks for joining me today.